here. All right, so schmuck, I loaded them all into one place. thing I need is the tables we got to go to. They don't say schmucks. Frank, do me a favor. Back of the book, W shapes. What page is that on? 486. So we're going to do a little flip-flopping back and forth here, unfortunately. Um, we are recording. We are here. Okay. So if you look at this one, go large. Structural steel wide flange is reinforced with two pieces of steel attached to the web of the member as shown. Calculate the moment of inertia of the built-up member with respect to the XY or X x centroidal axis so the center of the um the beam um this happens this happens quite a bit out in the real world right because somebody um just can't get the right shape they want but they can make it up okay so when this happens this isn't as easy as just pulling out the w18 by 71 and pulling off the section line okay the cool part is that's the problem we already got no data for. The other two pieces, the pieces of steel we put on the outside, we got to calculate. Okay? So we're going to look for that eye, so those two pieces of steel, and then sum them together to get the hole. Fair enough? And just so you know where we're heading is when we do the bending, we got to deal with MC over I know where that is. So we got to always know where the centroid is, and we always got to know where the moment of inertia is. Not where it is, but what it is. Okay? So literally that's what we're up to. So hopefully, come Monday, I think it's Monday, it depends on the day though, um, we'll get into some bending stuff. Right? We can start seeing the fun that goes with those. Okay? But we got to get this stuff kind of mastered first. All right, so Long and short of this, um, W1871, okay? So here's where we're going to get C6. So I apologize up front. W18 by 71. Right across here, okay? And so as long as you are here, it's a good idea to write down all the parts and pieces, okay? And I'm gonna write them down so I can transfer them over to the other page here. So we got an area, and that is 20.9. Uh, Henry, you're gonna need, there should be two pages there, I think. There's probably four. Um, all right, we are going to need the I, X value, which is 1170 inches to the fourth, okay? And just for sake of uh, fun here, go all the way over to the S value, which is 
60.3, okay? Okay, and just so that you guys are following along here, God, that's confusing. Oh, it is for the Y, 15.8. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. And if we needed to know the Y, it's all there. But all the other stuff's there. So let's go back here and have a little view of what's going on here. So we got a D. That's our overall dimension, right? We need D. Um... No, we don't need D in this case. Okay. Um, but if we were actually taking those apart piece by piece, we would. But here's the thing I don't want you to do is, yes, you can treat this as a rectangle, that is a rectangle, and that top is a rectangle, except for the fact that we got these curves in here. Okay. And that you're going to miss. Are you going to miss it by a lot? Eh, it won't be that big a deal. But trust me, um, that is in there because that has strength to the material. Okay. So we do what we want to account for that. Okay. But if you had to do a, you don't have the manual with you and you have no idea what it is, three rectangles, do it, find a centroid, everybody hunky dory, and you're close enough for government. Okay. And then just slap a factor of safety on it to be safe. But trust me, if you're going to sit down and do a real design, you're not doing back and envelope calculation. Okay? You are sitting someplace with all the references you need. Guarantee it. Okay? If you're not, go someplace where all that's there. Don't crash a polar lander into Mars for no apparent reason. Okay? So all we actually need is the area and the, um, actually all we need is the eye, but I wanted to show you this table. The TW, that's the thickness of the web. That's important sometimes. And TF, the thickness of the flange, is up here. And the BF is the, uh, the width of the flange itself. Okay? So get used to this table. You're going to see it and use it quite a bit. Um, you might as well have it handy when you're ready to go for it and know where it is. All right. So we have a... Whoa, what am I writing with today? We got an I of the W18 by 71 that is actually equal to 1170 inches to the fourth, okay? Nothing complicated there. We don't even have to get into a lot of the other stuff, do we? Okay, we're not looking for the areas and all that stuff, just simple. Find the shapes. Yeah. I tried to make a couple of these easy up front so you didn't have to struggle with these, but I want to show you some of these pieces. All right, the I for the plates is going to be what? So we got a plate that looks like this 15 inches. by one inch. Okay. So we got a base times the height cubed over 12. And I'm going to multiply it times two because there happens to be two of those we're going to play with. Fair enough. So if we go plug some numbers in here, what are we going to get? I'll give you the 12. 
What's the base? One. Thank you. And the height cubed is going to be? 15. All right. So 15 cubed divided by 12 times 2 gives us a grand number. Five sixty two point five. And then watch your units and make sure it's inches to the four. Everybody good? Okay, so do I really need to carry the point five off there? No. So we'll round it up to five sixty three. In this case, it's a good idea to round it up because we're going to make that larger. Okay. All right. So then I total will be the I of the W plus the I of the plate. So 1170 inches to the fourth plus the 563 inches to the fourth. One other little safety thing here to keep your eye on with this, not safety, but um, if I did two up here, I'm good in the plate, multiplied that. But if I only did that for one plate, make sure down here you add two plates, okay? Don't care where you do it, as long as you bookkeepingly keep it straight, okay? Otherwise, you're going to have a problem. Um, what's that turn out to? 1733. Okay. Now, that was just to calculate the I. If I want to know the C on this, um, we need to go back to our table. And we're going to look for that D on the 11 by 17, which is something I should have wrote down while I was there is 18.5, right? Okay, so back here. The D value here was 18.5 inches. So C is D divided by two and 18.5 inches divided by two is nine point two five. Okay. So literally now we know everything if we had to go figure out the stress. Um we know that, we know that, and that we'd have to do some calculations ahead of time for. Okay? But that's where we're heading with that. Okay? If you take a look at this for a moment, um, what do we do to this thing? So if we just had the 1170, right, we stiffened it up by putting the extra uh, plates on the side of it and gave us a great, greater moment of inertia. So it can carry more of a deflection or bending or twisting load or any of that stuff, okay? That's why we do it. And it happens quite a bit. Um, I, I, not a structural engineer, but I would venture to say that 80% of the time you can just pull a standard stock stuff, right? And it will, it will work. The other 15% of the time, you're making something weird, okay? Which is why they pay me. Anybody go to the job fair yesterday? You see the base field? Yep. So they make some really interesting connections to build. Okay. Guarantee it. Everything they made is odd. Okay. But where they can get away with standard field in the main pieces, they do. But on all their connection points, they're reinforcing things and adding all kinds of stuff. So 
got a little bit more metal to it. And if you saw one of the coolest ones they've ever done, um, you know who uh, Patty Hearst is and who her father was? So Patty Hearst was this crazy um, woman that basically hung out with um, a bunch of uh, criminals in the 60s. But her father ran the Hearst Newspaper Syndicate. And the Hearst building down in New York City is this egg-shaped spiral that came out of the original old brown sandstone building. And all that steel was made over here in Governor. So it's a cool company to work for. I'm not trying to advertise for them. It's just some interesting facts about it. Okay, everybody good on that problem? So that would be the answer we'd need to actually go through to do the moment bit we're going to do next week. Good? All right. Now let's have a little bit more fun. Let's go down and take a look. What did I give you? 8.9 is a... Do -do 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 -do. Is that the right one? Yeah, two inches. Okay. And then I gave you, did I put these backwards? Oh yeah, I gave you the Z. Well, let's do the one from last. Yeah, we'll do this one. All right, quick cut and paste. And I gotta go to here. Over to here. Paste. No. You can come off for the time being. All right. So we are going to be doing this one. Now, this one's a bit more um, in tune with what we were doing. Okay. And this one is problem eight. Point nine, and this is letter C. So if you're following along in the book. All right, so how do we start this one? Actually, what are we looking for first? It is calculate the moment of inertia with respect to both the centroidal axis for the area shown, okay? So what are we gonna do? How are we gonna do this? Uh, yes, we're going to find them both. So this is that point in time where it's time to either decide to make a table or just run a bunch of equations. Okay, And I want to do the table first because it will make the whole process make sense to you, I'm hoping. Okay? It has in the years I've taught it. Okay, So um, let's label this one part one. We'll label this one part two, okay? And just to keep them straightened out in our mind, I'm going to put a circle around them. All right, so we got one, we got two. All right, we need Y bar, we need A, and we need A, Y bar. And then we can find... Um, Uh, I want to do this in a table. Well, I guess I'm going to do it this way. X bar. A of X bar. And then we got I of X and I of Y. All right, I think I got them all in there. All right, so we got to establish a zero, don't we? Where do you want to call the zero on this plane? Oh, you know what we need? What did I miss from the table? Um, 
AD, didn't I? AY, AD. Tell you what, let's skip that part. I'll just do that on the table or calculations. We'll do this one. So Y bar for part one is 10 inches, right? So what's the centroid of this 10 inches? <laughs> Five. Okay. Part two, the centroid for that is? Uh, just the part itself, not the um, other bit. One. One. Okay. The areas for these are? Ten times two is twenty. And what's the other one? Twenty-eight. Uh, I should put the units up here too. Inches squared, inches, inches cubed. I'm going to save this part over here for the, we'll just do it separately so we can just keep our head in the right, same direction here. Okay. All right. So we are five inches there. We are one inch there. Okay. All right. Five times 20 is? One times 28 should be 28. So far, so good. Okay. All right, X bar. So now looking at it the other way, you may have an answer. In the X, let's pick a different color for X. Let's use blue. Um, now the X is going to be about this one. So where is this located in relationship to all this? Okay. So the centroid for this one is 
actually seven over on two, right? So seven inches. Okay. And our other one is still seven inches, right? Or is it? So I brought it from this edge over to here to seven inches. That's for two. What's the centroid for one? Point five. No. Just one. Right? And where was I going with that? I was trying to get you caught in that paying attention to the outside edges. Yes? You clear, Carter? Okay. Ah, yeah, okay, so you were just nodding your head at me a, a few minutes ago when I explained Carter's answer, and you got this at the centroid of object one of this complex shape is only one inch over from the right, okay, so that's one. All right, the area is still the same, we didn't change the areas, and if you did, God help us. Um, that's a uh, squishy object that will not stay in place. And if you can create a beam out of that, let me know. All right, so 1 times 20 is 20. 7 times 28 is? 196. Okay, so far so good? The area is the same, but this is area times x bar. So this is inches cubed. All right. Now, and for the sake of doing this, I think I'm going to add the i bars or the i's in here. I about xx and the i about yy. Okay, just so we got them, put them in the table. But the real truth of this is I of one in the XX is base times the height cubed, bless you, over 12 plus the area, um, uh, what was that? Area D squared, right? From yesterday. Okay. So we're going to play with that. So the base on one is two inches, correct? Base times height cubed divided by 12. AD squared. All right, so we got 2 inches for that. We got uh, 10 inches cubed divided by 12. Plus the area for 1 was 20 inches squared. Now the D for this is going to be what? So, and I actually should label this D of one. So if I got to pick a baseline here someplace, right? Now is the point of choosing your base. Or you could have chosen in the beginning, you just kept it in the back of your mind. But right now is the point where I got to know a base, okay? Where's the logical base for this? At the bottom, I like the bottom. Things that sit flat on the table are always a good spot. But you could pick the top, okay? But I wouldn't try to pick something in the middle. It just gets really complicated. All right. So I'm going to call this X0, okay? So, actually, sorry, that's Y0. So I'm going to go up to here, and this is D1 in the um, value I'm looking for is? Seven.
everybody good with that choice? You see why I'm doing it. Justin? Okay. Frank? Yeah, or no, I'm not. Okay, so we're coming in quite. All right, so I got to go from. That'd be really heavy. Black. Oh, yeah, I could. No, people get hurt that way. It's only funny if you tell me folks in Iowa. I'm not doing so All right, so we know from this line here up, five was the send part of that part. I establish this distance out here as my base, and I'm going to take all my measurements for the second half of this equation. Okay, so that D is really all about from here to that center. Okay, it would be good. Now, I missed a step, didn't I? Why don't you tell me about it? I was having too much fun trying to get to this. I missed a step, didn't I? Yeah, I did. What did I miss? So I need to know where y bar zero is, and that's the summation of a y bar over the summation of the area. I'm glad you were confused, Frank. All right, so 20 and 28 is 48 here, 128 there, okay? Take this back to black. So 128 inches cubed over 48 inches, and that gives me a value of what? What do you got, Henry? 2.66 inches. Okay, so right about there is my YO. Okay, so this was all in error. So I got to go from there to there is my D1. Okay. So this turns out to be 2.66 inches. So what is the D value I'm looking for? 5 minus 2.66 equals... Is that where you were lost, Frank? Yeah. Please don't. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I was getting too excited and having too much fun. And trust me, if I can do it, you guys can do it. <coughs> Have fun. Yeah. No, can you get lost in your calculations? Yes. But the trick to this is practice and remembering the steps you're doing. What do you guys got? 2.34. So this goes down into here as 2.34. All right, now what do we get for this value? Twenty six point one eight. Okay, everybody good? Yeah. 
276. Oh, sorry. Someday when we get back to the point where we don't have mass on, we'll all be able to awesome. hear each other. It's almost somebody needs to invent a mask that goes, the microphone built in, it goes to your phone, it checks out. And then you need, you want to make a million dollars. I'll take anything for help right now. <laughs> Actually, maybe hearing aid can help on my end. Yeah. So we got it there. Now, what's the I2 for this? So it's the same equation. And the only thing that should be in discussion really is the D value. Um, we are 6, 6, 12, 14. And 2 inches divided by 12 plus the area of that was 14. We do that area right up here. 28, yeah. What's that? Can't hear you. Oh, square and Oh, thank you. Get out of there. Now you're going to be a pain. Okay. So what's the D going to be? So we're going from here now. So that'll be D of 2. So we're 2.66 to the centroid of part 2. So it's 1 up, right? So it's 1 down. So 2.66 minus 1, 1.66. Anybody disagree? Where y is equal to 0 is where this thing <coughs> balances itself out on my finger. So what is the d1 So the process is this, find your areas, find the centroid of each part, calculate the area times the centroid to get your AY um, bar, and then sum those together and sum the areas together to find your true centroid of the part. Okay? And that's where everything's pivoting about. Okay? So that Y is zero there just doesn't need to be there anymore. It was there because I was trying to get a, a baseline to measure from. But I'm not measuring there. So I'm really looking at this point right here. So if I did this with um, if I was to put this thing in motion, it would pivot around that point. Okay, that's where it's gonna twist. So that's the point of balance that we're looking for. So everything's got to go around that point of balance. That is the new zero where everything. Okay. Nate, you good? Why are you subtracting one from the other? So we are going from five to this to two point six six. We're going to get that move to that point there. What the um, AB one was. That's 2.34 inches. 
and then from here to there, then you kind of just good man. Everybody else good? This is good timing to have this on a day where it's got two hours. All right. Um, so we know 1.66 right down here. And the answer for that turns out to be Six point four nine inches to the fourth. So I of X is I of one plus I of two, and that is equal to two seventy six point one eight plus eighty six point four nine inches to the fourth. And that is what number? Three sixty nine point six seven. Sixty two. Sixty two. Okay. So that's that one. We do the same thing for the Y. Does anybody care? We'll try another problem here. I just have a question. So for the division of these for I and X, like I have everything else in the division for I and X. Is that what you come along? I may have said it wrong. Let's try a different one. All right, let's go do some cutting and pasting.
here. Let me take that one. Okay, so here's the next fun one. Okay, now this one's kind of cool because this actually is going to be where is the centroid of this actually going to be? Right there. Okay. So that's kind of saves us a nice bit of sanity here, doesn't it? No guessing, you know, top bottom. It's really those T shapes or things that are off size and just have to deal with them. All right. So let's do. Um, Well, I'm just trying to think, is there really a reason to do, um, yeah, that's what I'm trying to think of. I think we can skip the table for this one. Everybody kind of good? See why? Because literally this side's the same as that side, and then we got the centerpiece here. So we really wind up with, um, you know, if I was to do this separately, we could, do pieces like that. I could do pieces like this, whichever way you want to go. Um, I'm just looking at the author's solution to see which way he did do it. And I believe he did um, one inch. Yeah. I'm going to go with the way I first drew it. I'm going to divide it there. So this is five inches overall there, and five inches overall there. Does that make sense? As long as we do it the same, or not the same, but consistently, we're good. If you choose the other way, you should get the same answer. Okay. All right, so let's do... Um, so area of uh, one, and I guess that's going to be this will be one, and then we'll make this one uh, sorry two, and we'll make this one three, but then we're going to have area of two equals area of three. But the area of that's going to be 5 times 1. Whoops, that's area 1. Is 8 times 1. And this one will be 5 inches times 1 inch. Okay. Everybody okay with that? All right, so the next bit of this is the I for two. Now let's do I for one. We'll just keep it in the right numeric order here. I one is base times the height cubed over 12. Our base is one inch. Our height is eight inches, and that's cubed divided by 12, and that gives us a what value? Forty-two point six seven inches to the fourth. So far so good? Okay. I2, oops, I2, is the base times the height cubed over 12. Its base is 5 inches. Its height is 1 inch. And 5 twelfths is? Oh. 
No, really. Oh, crap. There's something we do have to do here. <sighs> Son of a pup. Okay. Yeah, we can do this when tableized, but what just happened to these things? We got to have this area and the D squared on it. Why? Yeah, they got to line them back up. It's that bit where I just threw my arms out and spun in circles. You know, I got that extra mass out there, and it's got to get back to the center, not just the centroid of the one part. Okay, sorry, that's why I was questioning that, Tyler. All right, so we do this one. It's um, five inches, one inches cubed over twelve. The area of that is five inches squared. And we got to go from the centroid to the centroid of the part. So what's that going to be? Four point five inches. And then we get a number. That's going to make a difference in it. Everybody agree? Okay. So I total will be I1 plus I2 <coughs> plus I3. And we don't have to do three again unless you really want to. But 42.67. Inches to the fourth plus 101.6 inches to the fourth plus 101.6 inches to the fourth. Or you could write it as 42.67 inches to the fourth plus two times 101.6 inches to the fourth. We get you the same answers. And if you do this right, you get a grand number that looks like. 246 or something like that? 245.8. 245.8. And that's your moment of inertia. And your C is, depends on where you want to draw your baseline, but it's going to be at X, X axis right now, uh, which would be uh, four, five, um, five inches from the bottom if you really wanted to know where it was. Okay, you got to measure from some point. Four or five inches from the top. You are going to want to see. Um, Because I won, everything spins about its centroid. Okay. The centroid for um, objects two and three is way off center. And they all got to go back to the center. Okay. Which is going to get where I was heading here. So that's a good lead of thinking. I don't know if you find that or even if you're not this far. But, um, 
think you use your imagination still, but I'm sure none of you have ever seen it. Um, when they were getting asked about thirty percent, I understand gravitational effects that are going to be put on Earth when they drop them off the surface of the planet, on a Saturn V rocket, at all kinds of tremendous power. They literally put them in a centrifuge and, and spun them until they were sick. I'm sure a lot of them were not sick. But they had to get them used to it. And the trick is this. If I have an object and I can spin it tightly around the Saturn, <coughs> it doesn't have very much momentum. Okay? Therefore, it has very little gravitational effect on it. Okay? But the further I move it out, 20 feet from the center, if I spin it really fast, it's going to have a huge uh, gravitational effect, or the gravitational effect that they always talk about with fighter pilots, they pull 4 Gs, you know, they pull 20 Gs to pass out the cockpit. Uh, but it's always that effect of what the gravitational pull is on it, okay? If you think about this particular shape, this L, okay, and it was actually out in space, Space station, okay? Out on the flanges at two and three, you would have normal gravitational effect. You'd be able to stand up and walk around there, okay? But the closer you get to the origin or the C point at uh, five inches off the outside edges into the center, you would have no gravity because everything out here is spinning with momentum, but in the center is not, okay? And it's the same effect as the amount of wind turbine is. So the hub, they don't really rotate really fast with the hub. Velocity wise. It's the tips that are going out to 150 miles an hour. Okay, because of the length. Okay. They gotta get that sweep followed up with just a little bit of motion on the hubs. Now granted the hubs is you know, it's not that big. Hubs are three feet, four feet wide here. But that tip way out there, 200 feet out. Just trying to catch up with a little bit of space in here. There's really no stuff going on in here. It's all out there. Same with this. If you look at this, if we were going to bend this beam, where is it going to rotate about? It's going to rotate about the center axis, that, that deck. But as it starts to twist or rotate in space, we're going to give it some momentum. Okay? And that is why we call it moment of inertia. Because it's the inertia of that object rotating out in space, okay? Now, kind of corny, we're not really out in space, but the laws of Newton still apply and they haven't changed yet. Okay? Right. You can always think of this stuff out in space. Um, so somewhere in your world you got, I think I asked this of you guys, you learned about moment compass, right? Or did I explain that the other day? Yes. I explained it the other day. So, we got a center axis here and we got a force over here. Okay? We got a distance between the force and the center. Well, that's the same thing that's going on here with the centroid. There's the centroid, but now I got all this mass out here and it's going to want to move. And my job is to keep it from moving. So I always put a moment couple on it to keep it in place. Okay? Make sense? All right. Cool. You guys need a break or you want to keep trucking along? Need a break. Okay, let's take a five minute break and come on back in. We'll do one more of these. See where we go. See which ones I want to do. Because you know, whichever ones I don't do, you're going to get for homework. Justin, pick one of those in there that you'd like to do next. Uh, 
It looks like a magnet. Actually, it's some wooden timber, but yeah, we can do that one. Cool. What's that? That one looks easy, so I want to keep that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to the last one. Go to the last one. Do the last one. Yeah. 8.5. Yeah. Wait, no, no. That's one. Oh, yeah. This is similar to Punch Okay, all right. 8.12. The people have that score. 812, okay. All right. That's fair. <laughs> well, you two are going to have to Indian wrestle in the middle of the floor here for it. You know. A12 is not bad. What was the other one? Uh, 8.30 is not horrible. I'll give you a hint on 8.30, though. If you do this, um, does that make it a little different? You got two triangles there? You could do a trapezoid, like so. Just a matter of finding the shapes you want to play with. Okay, so we are doing this one. back yeah how about we do this one with establishing the base down here and we'll actually use the y is equal to zero table for this or do you not want a table for this? Okay. All right. So let's do, uh, we want to call these things first. So um, we'll call this one one. And this one, two. And then this one is three, but really it's the same as two. No, three. Okay. And they are the same things. They're C1540. Okay. All right. Um, let's do this. Um, 
Oh, we have a table. So one, two, three. Our Y bar, our area, and the area Y bar. Okay. So let's see, let's do the areas first. The first one's easy. Twenty seven times one is twenty seven. Okay, the area for the other two, so we'll go out and get the uh, C15 by 40, and you're gonna have to go to the appendix there, but I'll give it to you, is um, the area for that is 11.8 inches. Okay, now, No, I want to go get some measurements off that table, so I'm going to go there. Um, AC. Um, so this will be, what I'm looking for is the D for that. So C, 1540, 1540. D is actually 15 inches. Cool, one that actually is on the nose. All right, the Y bar for that is, where'd it go? Well, it'd be 7.5, but not listed there. Cool. All right. So back to here for a bit. All right. So this distance there to here is 15 inches on the nose. Okay. So the Y bar for two and three is 7.5 inches. Okay given the fact that we're going to go from the bottom. All right. So what's the Y bar for the plate up above? Say it again. No, not in this case. 15.5. All right, and the area I got already was 11.8 for both of those. Okay, so AY is for each of those. What you got, anybody? 418.5. So we're going to tally that one up. So the summation of this one is. Okay, a y summation is c 
795. Five. 795. Five. 95. Oh, 95. 595. Yes, 0.5. <laughs> All right. So our Y naught is going to be located at the summation of a Y over summation of A, 595.5 inches cubed divided by 50.6 inches squared. And we get a number that looks like what? Point eight. Everybody good with that? Which means someplace in here, you're probably right there, is 11.8 inches up from here. Should always be fun. Just how can they mow the lawn today? All right, so I of um, one is base times the height cubed over. 12 plus a1 and now we got a d squared in there so what's that d going to be twenty seven inches times one inches cubed over 12 right and the area for that was 27 yeah 27 inches squared and the D from that centroid right there so D1 has got to go down to that point there what's that going to be Tell you what, I'll even write this out so we can't have any. D1 is 15 plus 0 0.5 for the centroid plus, or I'm sorry, minus the 11.8 inches, right? That's the 
height of the C channel. Whoops. That's the centroid of the plate. And that's the Y naught that we found earlier. Okay. So 3.7 inches and square that. And what do you get for I1? Three seventy one point nine. Everybody agree? Carter shaking his head no. Sir, so many places. All right, 3.71, okay, cool, we have agreement. All right, how about I2 and I3? Now, I'm gonna ask a really dumb question here in a second, um, just because, um, why am I adding this in here? Why do I want that in there again? Louder. No, it's not the area of two. I gotta take it back to why not for our real central of this foundation piece. Take it back to the central. So I know this is fifteen. So it's centroid for the C channel is right here at 7.5 <coughs> inches. Okay, so that's that centroid. But because I have all this extra mass out here, it's real centroid of this combination of three is at 11.7, okay? So D2, and D3 are equal to 11.8 inches minus 7.5 inches. And that should come out to be 4.3. Make sense? You good, Eloge? Okay. All right, so we go down here. We are cool. Po oh, well, could have saved yourself a lot of hassle here, couldn't we? Did I write down what the I X or the I value was of the uh, um, C shapes? Idiot. Anytime you go to those tables, write down everything on that table that could be important because you're going to go back to it over and over again. Just like this. So, I for a four to our 15 by 40 is 348. Okay. So far, so good there? All right. So, if I was smart, I would have written that down back someplace in the beginning of the problem. So, I really don't have to do this. 348 inches to the fourth. And a little note here, go to table in appendix. Um, for the C channel itself, yeah. it would have been a space across the bottom. Oh, I didn't know you can't. Can. Now you're back to trying to guess what that curve is inside this channel. Yeah, because we wouldn't have been able to do the eyes. Right. No. 
And that's why I was, so when you get back here, folks, and you start looking at this thing, and you got this channel in front of your uh, screen, or on your book there, that's not a flat piece, it's not a curve. It's actually a curve with a taper to it, and then we got a curve out at the end. So that's actually made from squeezing it through kind of rollers, all right? And they keep the back flat, and they keep this flat, and actually they're perpendicular to each other, just because of what we use for the material, or different applications. But the inside of this is all kind of got some curves in it. That's pretty uniformly <coughs> thickness across there, but there's no way you could actually do that. You could, if you really tried, calculate get your Y someplace off the table here, and figure out what that is. It's a standard curve to it. Somebody knows exactly, but most engineers don't. And we just go to the table and figure it out. Okay. So in the beginning of this problem, I should have come down here and wrote down area. It is it nice to get the height so I knew that that was 15 inches? I'm not so worried about the BF um, land thickness there, but that's kind of useful to know because that's that dimension across here. If you really need really to know, but that's much of a problem. The average uh, uh, PF of the uh, flange, that's the thickness across the field. You know, it's the average. Could you do it? Yeah, you could use that. But why not? And then the X bar and the X IX. Uh, I just write those down. Just save yourself and put them back there. Or the other little note I have, I'll tell you, if you got the paper back, you got the book, stick a sheet of paper in there so you can flip back to it really quick or go buy some of those little sticky tabs and stick on those pages so you can flip those open when you need them. Because you're going to go from the problem to the appendix. The appendix to the problem and then back from the problem to the appendix. Okay, It's just worth writing it all down. Take it down as given stuff. All right, so now where are we at here? All right, so we got to get our area. So the area of two, please tell me I wrote that down someplace. Yeah, 11.8, right? Now what's the D going to be? We just did that, and that was 4.3. And our number is? And if you're going to make a mistake in this part of the problem, two places. One is getting the wrong D, and the other is forgetting to square the D. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Yep, otherwise we'd have some really weird combination of units. What do you got, Frank? Uh, 5, 8, 6, 9. 5, 8, 6, 9. 6.9. 6.9. I've got 5, 6. That's what I was thinking, 560-something. Uh, five sixty-eight point what? 566.18. 566. Yeah, I have okay. All right. And I3 will be the same thing. So we go do all this, the IT will be I1 plus 2 times I2, okay? And 372, let's say, inches to the fourth, 566 inches to the fourth times 2, and 15,000 something. 
Cool. All right. And we already know our 10 prices. We got that up there, right? Cool. Everybody kind of good? Think we can handle the rest of these for homework? I'd say we make it do. I think they make it do money, but that's insane. But then if they make it do Wednesday, then they're screwed up again. We're not back on our Monday schedule. Um, yeah, let's make them do Wednesday. If you have questions on Monday, I'll be glad to answer that. I don't know if this Monday morning schedule thing's ever going to work again. All right. If anybody's got questions, don't hesitate to ask. And please don't be bashful. Other than that, you all have a good weekend.